So, you picked up a 6600 XT and your intention was to use it on Linux. You got a big black nothing and you ended up here. Welcome, weary traveler. This is level one. I like Linux and Linux related things. I also like graphics cards. I like tinkering with things, a little bit of a nerd. Uh, I might be a reflection of your dark future. Let's go ahead and put together uh, some instructions and talk about this card on Linux because it's pretty darn good. AMD has launched the 6600 XT, and a lot of Linux users really, really like AMD's GPUs because AMD GPU, it's mostly pretty much completely open. Mostly pretty much. It works really well with Steam on Linux, mostly pretty much. And this card, mostly pretty much, works out of the box with the Ubuntu 21.04 installer. Well, okay, I'm saying that, and you're immediately like, that is incorrect. Okay, okay. If you do the graphical installer, the AMD GPU driver sees this card, kind of thinks it knows how to use this card, goes to try to load this card, it doesn't have the firmware, and bars. So you'll be stuck on the text mode console basically forever, waiting to, for it to install. And it looks like your USB drive is doing something, but that's actually the display manager crashing over and over and over again. Fortunately, the Ubuntu folks have a built-in menu, which is Ubuntu Safe Mode Graphics, which basically just uses a very simple frame buffer driver and we'll get you in. Go ahead and install Linux, set it up, do your partitioning. You're good to go on 21.04. The computer will reboot, and it doesn't remember that you said safe graphics. So immediately it's gonna try to use AMD GPU again. Guess what? Big black nothing, once again. Ooh, installer failure, basic testing, we don't do that. Hey, at least it's not as bad as the Fedora installer in this situation, which is gonna require a more elaborate how-to from me because if you try to install this on Fedora, you're gonna have an even worse time, but that's a, that's a video for another day. I just, wanna, I just wanna be able to click Steam and install my games and do stuff. And well, Steam on Ubuntu basically gives you that experience. So what you gotta do is when you get the menu, when the computer boots up, you gotta hit E. And you gotta go down to the Linux line and you gotta add no mode set, all one word at the very end of the line, the Linux line, it matters which line. And then you press Control X and your machine will boot up. This will also force it to use a very basic frame buffer driver. You'll, you'll get a graphical prompt here. We could have gone to the, the command line before and fixed this, but I'm trying to show you something that's maybe a little bit more noob friendly. All right, so the crux of the problem here is that you need the firmware. There's a binary blob that tells the open source, uh, that the open source driver uses, that tells the open source driver how to interface with some of their lower level hardware components. That thing is not open source, but that's not open source in a lot of hardware drivers, network cards, things like that. So AMD gets a little bit of a pass on that. The problem is that the Linux dash firmware package, which normally manages that for Ubuntu and Fedora and pretty much every other distro, typically runs a couple of weeks to a couple of months behind what's actually available on the actual Linux firmware Git repository. You see, in this day and age, Basically, all of this stuff is done through Git, which is a uh, you know version control source code management system. And the Linux firmware Git repository was updated basically on launch day, as I predicted for the 6600 XT. So understand what's happening here. You basically just need to copy some files out of this Git repository. So the guide in the level one forum, basically you got your, your thing installed, you did the no mode set. The next step, is to git clone that git repository. You might not have git installed, that's okay, you're just an apt install away from installing git, and you'll be good to go. And then you just git clone that. And then that clones a lot of firmware. You don't need all of this, you only need what's in the AMD GPU folder. So again, from the command line, that's what our CP command does here. It's copy, CP, you know, dash A, because we wanna copy all the subdirectories and everything else. Uh, our AMD GPU folder from inside our Linux firmware.git folder and copy that to slash user slash firmware slash AMD GPU. So that's gonna take our AMD GPU binary blobs from our Git repo and dump them on the file system. Now, normally I wouldn't recommend doing this. This is not something you should do because you're making a mess on your file system. You really want the package manager to do this for you. In this scenario, a little bit of an exception. So once you do that, you should be able to reboot should come right up. That's pretty much all that you needed to do. Now, if you're wondering 
okay, but is there something more that I can do? Well, it turns out there is. So this version of Ubuntu is based on kernel 5.11. Newer kernels actually work a little bit better. AMD's added even more stuff, but we have to go bleeding edge kernel. And that's not something I'm gonna cover in this video, but it's probably something I can cover in a future video. But note, at no point in my talking here or anything like that, that I say to go to amd.com and download a package or do anything with that. Sometimes you do see that come up in how-tos. There's other how-tos at the level one forum that has that. The reason for that is because sometimes the, the binary blob messiness is only inside those drivers. And so like you have to download them and you can use a couple of things out of them, but you don't actually install or use the whole thing. You can, but it's kind of distro locked. So if you're on Pop! OS, these steps will basically apply to you perfectly fine, perfectly reasonably on Pop! OS. Whereas if you try the installer from AMD.com on Pop! OS, it's not gonna work. Now to AMD's credit, they actually did provide reasonably complete drivers for Red Hat, and which trickles down to CentOS and trickles down to Fedora, which is sort of their you know workstation, a little bit more up to date, rolling a release kind of thing. But because it's Red Hat, and Red Hat is ultra conservative, still a little bit rough around the edges. Still probably better to just use the AMD GPU that's in the bleeding edge kernel and grab those binary blobs. But hey, there you go. If you get stuck or you have problems or you can't follow that thread on the level one forums, post because you're, you're gonna help everybody. If you need something a little bit more in depth, the how-to that I wrote when the 6800 XT launched basically still applies, still works. But this is a really abbreviated one that will get you up and running with Ubuntu 21.04 really quick because the, the canonical has basically dotted the I's and crosses the T's. Pretty much all you need is that firmware and you can get it from Linux firmware, uh, the Linux firmware, the official Linux firmware Git repository. And that is way easier, I think, than downloading from AMD. So hopefully you found this helpful. I'm Windows Level 1. I'm signing out. You can find me in the Level 1 forums. Hey, if you got any other tips and tricks and other fun stuff to pass along, let me know. Oh, we also did benchmarking. The ASRock Phantom Gaming 6900 XT came out on top. Our test system, a Ryzen 5950X. We did some quickie benchmarking, Rise of the Tomb Raider on the Linux side. Yeah, over 200 FPS with this card at 1080p, not a problem. See what I mean? It's like, oh, it's a 1080p graphics card. 200 FPS? It was just a couple of years ago, it was like 60 FPS in 1080p. That's a 1080p graphics card. Well, admittedly, that is an older game. What about Proton and Borderlands 3? Yeah, Borderlands 3 had some really respectable numbers here as well. And yes, Borderlands 3 is not technically supported on Linux, but it is well supported in a Steam client. In if you use Proton, you just check the box that, yes, I'm taking my life into my own hands and I want to run games on, on Linux that haven't been officially sanctioned. Works fine. Anyway, I'm going to go hang out in the forum now. I'll see you later.